let this be a normal field trip? With a friend? No way! Cruising on down Main Street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Yeah. Next thing that you know, you see it. Octopus in the neighborhood, surfing on the sine wave, swinging through the stars. Yeah. Take a left at Joe and Tastin, pick your second life that's more than a magic school of the wild to ride. Come on, right on the magic school bus. Goldfish died. Poor little guy. Aww. What? Was he visited by the Codfather? Hang on. According to my research, that's not a goldfish. No, I'm pretty sure. Good morning, Gloss! Miss Frizzle, yeah, this isn't a goldfish, is it? Oh, excellent, Dr. Mason VA. This is a clownfish. It normally lives in the coral reef ecosystem. Oh, maybe that's why he died. Coral reefs, huh? Sounds pretty cool. I'm glad you think so, Carlos, because that's where we're heading today. Uh, are there sharks there? Don't be silly, Arnold. Of course there are. I knew I should have stayed home today. Two of us! <laughs> See boots, everyone! So, what is a coral reef anyway? Good question, Carlos! Coral reefs are made from the calcium carbonate excreted by tiny marine animals. They're often called the rainforest of the sea because they make up one of the most diverse ecosystems on Earth. In fact, they occupy less than one tenth of the ocean's surface, but they form about 25% of all marine life. Ah, we've reached the ocean! Bus do your stuff! It really is beautiful here. It sure is, but it's not also. Hey, look over there. Oh, please don't tell me it's a shark. These corals here have been abandoned by their centuries. They look like ghosts. According to my research, this is coral bleaching. Then you have to be bigger, DA. Coral bleaching is the poisoning of coral due to the expulsion of their symbiotes, the methylene, which is the main source of their pigmentation. But why would they separate? The symbiotic relationship between corals and their protozoa is much like the relationship between a couple. Every day, the zooxanthellite goes to work at the photosynthesis factory where he converts carbon dioxide into sugars and other organic compounds by using energy from the sun. The zooxanthellite lives under the protection of the coral's hospitality and in turn provides the coral its coloration. But when human activities emits too much greenhouse gases, with carbon dioxide being one of the major ones, the gases trap too much heat emitted by the sun within the atmosphere, and thus warming up the ocean. When the temperature of the ocean and the level of carbon dioxide rises, the zooxanthellae is given more work to do. Obviously, with more work and less time to spend with his wife, the Suzanthalate and the Coral's relationship starts to deteriorate. Fed up and frustrated, the Coral expels the Suzanthalate from her house. Overwhelmed with sadness and no one to provide pigmentation for her, the Coral becomes paler and paler and eventually adopts a ghostly white appearance. Like a divorce after a heated argument. Carlos! Hello, Arnold. Can we go now? Not yet, Arnold. We still have to look at ocean acidification. That doesn't sound fun. Ocean acidification happens when the ocean's pH decreases. Many human activities emit carbon dioxide. As some carbon dioxide leaks into the atmosphere, 
most enter the ocean and then dissolves in seawater. As the carbon dioxide dissolves, the level of hydrogen ion increases, lowering the pH of the seawater. As a result, the ocean becomes more acidic. Corals and other marine organisms build their skeletons by calcification, in which they convert bicarbonate into carbonate to form calcium carbonate. This process would generate hydrogen ion as a byproduct, which must be excreted into the water. But now that the ocean is full of hydrogen ions, the organisms will require much more energy to do so, making it harder to build their skeletons. Without this structural support, these organisms are not strong enough to survive in such a harsh environment. So carbon dioxide is doubly bad. Who cares? Let's just go home. I hate getting wet. Actually, Arnold, coral reefs are very important to life as we know it. Without coral reefs, you there, Justin Tong, wouldn't be eating that tuna sandwich right now. Yeah, I guess people living by the coastline rely a lot on seafood for their diet and exports. In fact, the global economic value of uh, coral reefs has been estimated at as much as 375 billion US dollars per year. And coral reefs are also an important source of biodiversity, not to mention an important barrier protecting coastal communities and beaches. Hmm. Coral and other marine ingredients are even used in our medicine. So I guess they're pretty important after all. But then, what can we do to save them? Well, in reality, we don't have the magic school bus, but you can start by reducing your carbon emissions by carpooling, recycling properly, and using biodegradable materials. Being a wise shopper also helps. Try to avoid purchasing coral accessories and decor pieces in order to avoid encouraging further coral mining. Or you can visit restaurants and shops that donate a portion of their profit to Coral Reef Alliance and other organizations that promote conservation awareness. And they also promote uh, sustainable marine businesses, as well as help implement marine protection.